Good morning. It's Monday, December 12, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Echoes of the Abandoned. In our scripture, Psalm chapter 42, where the psalmist writes, Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise Him again, my Savior and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you even from distant Mount Hermon, the source of the Jordan from the land of Mount Mizar. I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me, and through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. O God, my rock, I cry. Why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Their taunts break my bones. They scoff, where is this God of yours? Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Six times in seven verses, the psalmist uses that piercing interrogative, why? There aren't many humans who don't go there. Many live there. We want to know why we must suffer. The question suggests a tone of intimating God may be at fault for this injustice. Me? Me? Of all people, me? Why? It's like a raging child flinging an I hate you to the parent because he's been sent to his room. (laughs) It's odd, isn't it? Being banished to a cheerfully decorated suite with tech toys, computer, personal phone, and cable-loaded smart TV and imagining you're a victim of some Siberian death sentence. Well, the redeeming turn of the writer's tone is found in both the first and last verses. Twice in this psalm we hear, I will put my hope in God. In all biblical era literature and many modern genre, repetition means it's important. It means pay attention. This is big stuff. To put hope in something or someone is to trust. Hoping in God is the opposite of blaming God. It's placing your full trust in his wisdom. It's not a careless abandonment of your free will. Rather, it's a considered choice to lay down the defensive victim claiming in favor of picking up holy hands to praise the one who created you, never doubting, even when fearing, that you acknowledge he alone is the answer because he alone is truly your redemption. There are at least two ways to read this psalm. The first is the blame game, with that tone that says, God, what are you thinking with all this you're letting happen to me? The second way is with the explanatory interrogative. Father God, some people are asking why, why do I suffer? And I want them all to know I'm placing every egg I've got, my whole future, in your basket, God, no matter what may come. For you today, it's easy to go for the woe, despair, and agony on me choice number one of blaming God. Being a victim is so easy and acceptable in today's culture. Make your pain sound grotesque enough and you'll get a settlement in somebody's court. For a believer, that's nonsense. We are not victims, no matter what the world may label us, do to us, or what any of the world's big shots say about us. We are, as Paul declared, more than conquerors. We are held securely in the love and favor of the Father's hands. We are never abandoned. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.